Welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be making some DIY home decor. And these are things that I've been wanting to do for my house, some kind of final touches of like decor that I need for specific rooms. But before we get started, I have two very exciting things to tell you guys. So the first one is you guys love to DM me on Instagram with questions about DIY projects that you're you're working on or room makeovers that you're doing that maybe things aren't coming out exactly how you wanted them. Or even if you just want a second eye on it to make sure that it's just right. But DMs are like overwhelming to kind of sort through and figure out exactly who has questions or who's just reacting to stories. So I've created a dedicated email for you guys to email me any questions about DIY projects or room stuff. And it's askmckenna at gmail.com. Please be patient with me. They take a little longer, but be patient with me. I will get to you, I promise. The second exciting news that I have is that we are gonna be uploading a lot more vlogs and it's now called Exo McKenna Vlogs because Romeo's vintage clothing business has just like taken off and it's doing so well. So he's gonna be spending a lot more time doing that, but he's still gonna be in the vlogs just like Kinsley is gonna be in the vlogs. So if you guys wanted to see more of like behind the scenes about my life or what it really takes to go to do these room makeovers, and just about anything and everything about our lives together, then I think you'll really enjoy the vlog channel. So I'll leave it linked below so that you guys can go check it out because I just posted a new vlog today, which will be yesterday, your time. So go check it out. Okay, DIY home decor. So let me show you some of the projects that I've really been wanting to work on and let's get started. Okay, so for our first DIY, we are in my bedroom. And something that I've wanted to do in here is make more pillows for my bed. I made these, all three of these already in a DIY. I wanna get another set of pillowcases to have four pillows in the back. So it kind of like has like a pretty like vibe. Then I want to make, I found this uh, European linen fabric at the Rose Bowl. I wanna make larger pillows to go behind these black ones back here. It was a lot cheaper to get this fabric and then make them myself than it was to buy there. So I just went to Ikea and picked up these inserts. So we're gonna do a little bit of measuring and cutting and sewing and make some new pillows. I also have a cute other DIY pillow that you can do to a pillowcase. Uh, so let's get started. So if you guys buy fabric, you could obviously buy fabric the size that you need it to make the amount of pillows that you need. I just had to buy the piece that they had. So mine measures 57 inches by 80 seven inches which is actually pretty large so I calculated that I could get three pillows that are 24 inches square and the pillow inserts that we bought from Ikea are 26 inches and that's a good thing because I always do a bigger insert inside a smaller pillow because it makes it more fluffy and expensive looking so tip okay so what we're gonna do first is lay out our fabric and then cut out six pieces because we need back and front of both, so three pillows, so six sides. And then I'm gonna be cutting them 25 inches square because I need a half an inch all the way around for to sew it together for seam allowance. This is a beautiful piece of fabric but instead of just having these simple, smooth surfaced pillows, thinking about pulling it up like this and then stitching it along that side so that all of the pillows kind of have this like line down them. I think that it could be a really pretty way to add interest to a pillow without adding color. I could even go back over after it's stitched and put like a darker like black stitch on it or something or charcoal. Okay, so we're gonna take the back side of our pillowcase and fold it in half. So right on the fold, I'm gonna put it into the machine. I don't want this very much, so I'm actually going to do it like a quarter inch. So now when we open it back up, we have like this little line down the center. I mean, I know it's simple, but like, we're just trying to think of something that we could do to make it a little more like maybe high end. So I'm gonna do that to the front and the back so that they're the same size so we can sew them together. 
Okay, so I was just trying this out with just some black thread and a needle to create kind of like a stitching along that line. I think it's a cool idea, but I don't think that it's right for my bedroom. Okay, so I got the front and the back with our new little kind of like decorative seam in there. And the next step is to put them and match both of your front and your back sides together. So first I'm gonna match up these two little decorative seams, pin that together, and then we're gonna pin all the way around the pillow and sew it together. We're gonna be leaving just enough space on the bottom unsewn so that we can put all of the stuffing on the inside when it's turned inside out. So I'm gonna go backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, and then start sewing. Once you get to a corner, I leave the needle down inside the fabric and then I pick up the foot and shift the fabric so that I can keep sewing and then put the foot down and continue. Right before we turn it inside out, I have another tip for you guys. So sometimes on the corners of pillows, they tend to look a little sad or curved in. So a good way to make them pointy and actually like make them perfectly square is to cut it at a diagonal. We're gonna cut right there, close but not too close to that very point of our stitch so that we eliminate some of this fabric and it makes a better point. So now we're gonna turn it inside out. Pillows are actually not difficult to make. I mean, it is just a square, um, but there are a few little tips or tricks that I've learned along the way to make them look extra like expensive and luxurious and then make those points perfect. And you're gonna use the pen to pull that corner out. A little curved, but more pointy versus this. You can see the difference. This doesn't look cute, but this does. All we now need to do is sew this up by hand. And how we're gonna do that is I'm just gonna fold the two sides in that same half an inch and then match it up like that, stitch it right up by hand using a hand needle. So I just realized making my second pillow that I only bought two inserts from Ikea. I think originally I was only gonna make two pillows or that's what I thought I could make out of that fabric before I measured it. Oh, no, we bought two, so I made the other pillow, but we'll have to wait until um, we can go back to the stores to get another insert to complete it. Imagine three, because I definitely think that it needs three, because then I'll have three of these large, lighter colored ones, and then two of the black, and then one of this one. So they'll go from three, two, and one. <laughs> it's also a pillow I actually had this pillow in my DIY studio for a different project that I was working on but I never used it so I felt like this was kind of just a plain colored pillow and I saw a really cool inspiration picture on Pinterest of a pillow that had kind of like a pattern of a leaf since we have access to leaves right now I felt like this would be a fun simple DIY so this is an existing pillowcase that I got from Ikea super simple so why not make it better probably should iron it i feel like these could make a pretty pattern because they're kind of like long with small leaves they're pretty too a little bigger so let's go back and see which one of these will make the best <laughs> print i don't know they both would look really good i'm just leaning more towards these like smaller leafed ones. And I'm just gonna like, kind of like wipe them off because I don't want any dirt on them. So what you're gonna need is whatever color you want your print to be, you need that in fabric paint. Um, so I'm gonna be using like an off white color, not quite white, but kind of like a creamy, ashy color. Paint the white onto the leaves, kind of like generously because we want it to be a stencil. Place it wherever. Uh, we want it to be, so I'm just gonna go for it. Press it down onto the pillowcase. Make sure that you're putting a lot of paint on your leaves. The stem of it isn't coming out like great, so I'm just kind of recreating the stem with my paintbrush.
so one of the projects is actually in my entryway and if you guys saw my entryway makeover series that I did I made some copper piping decor but I was quickly wanting to phase that copper piping out of my house because it's a little more warm and not so pink in my house so I found this one at the Rose Bowl flea market for $25 $25 no stain on it it's raw wood I think it might just have like a little bit of a um, oil since it's too light for this area and I have all of like really kind of dark wood in my house we're gonna stain it so I feel like this is a great project for you if you have maybe a piece of furniture that isn't quite matching or just want to kind of rejuvenate a piece of furniture special walnut this is my favorite stain that I use just always shake your stain I didn't do that one time I regretted it. That's nice. That's gonna be cool. That's gonna be nice. So here you can see the difference in this new stain and then how it was originally. I really like it. If I wanted it darker, I could just wait like about four hours and then do after it dries and then do another coat and it's gonna make it stain more. And then you can go back over it with a polyurethane finish. I did a dresser with the same wood and completely sanded it down and refinished it in my DIY boho room decor video. Also make sure that you're doing this in like a well ventilated area. So if you can do this outside, definitely do it. It's raining here in Los Angeles, so I can't. So we opened all of the windows here so that it could air out. next DIY I have been wanting and kind of itching to macrame something for a little bit I've been seeing these really cute bohemian macrame coasters on Pinterest I watched a couple of other tutorials on these coasters some I liked some I didn't like some were very hard to follow I think I figured it out though so I hope this tutorial is easy to follow and you guys will want to make them too what you're gonna need is macrame and some scissors and a tape measure just to measure out some of the yarn that we're gonna be using okay so to cut our cords one cord at 60 inches or five feet and then we're gonna need five cords at 30 inches in length Keep your macrame handy because we are going to need to cut more at shorter lengths to fill some of the gaps when we're making our spiral. So first you're going to take your longest strand, so the one that we cut to five feet, and you're going to take it at the very end. We're basically going to create like a little uh, loop. We're just going to kind of spiral it onto each other. And we're making the inside where we're going to start on the spiral on the inside of the coaster. Nothing's attached, it's just laying on top of each other. Then you're gonna take your five other strands and you're gonna fold them in half and make a loop. Now we're going to attach all five of these to this spiral and how we're gonna do that is with a reverse lark's head knot or a cow hitch knot, which is backwards basically. So instead of going over the spiral and underneath, we're gonna start underneath and then go on the top. And so we're gonna attach them by putting these strands through that loop and then pulling tight. And then we're just gonna attach the rest of these the same way around this spiral. The great thing about this project is that I get this macrame from Amazon and you guys can still order it. I literally just got that yesterday. Once you have all five attached like that, what we're gonna do is basically tighten them so that they kind of spiral around here. So you're gonna take the long side, not the short side, but the long side, and pull it, and it's gonna pull this circle through these knots that we made, and then kind of make them spiral and twist around. Ooh, that was so cool. That was like so satisfying. This long strand is gonna become our anchor strand. It's never going to loop around anything else. It's always gonna be the one that everything else loops around. So we're gonna do that by using a double half hitch knot. So what it's gonna do is you're gonna go underneath. This one's always gonna stay on top. It's gonna go underneath and you're gonna make a number four on top of that anchor strand. You're gonna go over, under, and pull tight. That makes the first part to the double half hitch and then you're gonna do it once more. Make a number four 
go over, under, and through, and then pull tight. So after that double half hitch knot is done, we're gonna move on to the next cord and we're gonna keep going around in a circle. I've made one circle around and you can see that there's this like gap here and I really need to fill that. So this is where your extra macrame comes in handy and you're gonna need to cut some more. So I'm gonna cut another strand. Instead of 30 inches, I'm gonna make it 26 inches because it doesn't have to do all of this other work that those strands needed to do. Okay, so right in that gap, you're gonna take one of your new 26 inch strands and you're gonna do that reverse lark's head knot or that cow hitch knot and pull tight. And you're doing this around that same hold strand or that anchor strand. Do one more and you're just gonna keep going. Found another gap here, I'm gonna do one more. As you go around, you can shorten the length that you're cutting these so to save on macrame too. I'm still doing them at the 26 inch mark and I've added five so far. So I'm just gonna keep going like this all the way around. Okay, so I've got the center part here measuring about four inches. I have some left over, so I'm gonna stick it back through here and pull it to the back. I think knotting it is the best way. And then just cut off the rest. This first strand that we started with, there in the very center, I'm gonna cut that as well because it's really secure, so you don't need to do anything else with that. Next, we're gonna cut these strands into a circle and make them all the same length. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna brush these out anyways and then recut them later. I like to take Kinsley's dog brush to brush out these ends. So I'm just gonna start at the bottom, brushing it out and working my way up towards the center. I actually did this style of fringe in my macrame pillow I made a while ago and it turns out so pretty, but you just have to take it little by little. So now that we have it all brushed out, I'm just gonna go back in and cut it and trim it to exactly the width I want. Using a smaller millimeter macrame cord would even fill in these, see these little holes around the center? I feel like they'll be closer together and the fringe will fill that out a little more. So if you guys wanted to try a thinner macrame cord, I definitely would recommend it. But it looks so cute! <laughs> enjoyed this video and if you did hit the like button below if, and if you're not already part of our DIY family hit that subscribe button hit that little notification bell so you know exactly when I upload every Sunday and don't forget to check out the vlogs and if you have DIY questions or room makeover questions email me I'll see you guys next week bye guys